In this video, I want to talk about making a left turn at an intersection where you have a vehicle that's already committed to the intersection in front of you and why we stay behind the stop line in case the light changes and we can't you know, come into the intersection and get committed to the intersection for our own turn. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're coming up, it's a protected left turn here. We've got a left turn signal returning on to the returning into the first available lane here and then you know you very often at this point I'll, I'll tell students next intersection we're going to take a left and so what happens sometimes is if this vehicle isn't here they'll see a break in the line and they'll automatically assume oh this is the turn the turn lane is here and they, they start moving their car over I'm like this is not our turn lane look further ahead and then they look ahead and they realize, oh no, this is not a turn lane that I'm going into. This is the oncoming traffic's turn lane for turning into the little complex here. So again, it goes back to scan. Don't assume things on the road, scan and verify. Now, in a moment's time, the traffic starts flowing and we're gonna be going into our own left turn lane here coming up and we, need to shoulder check to a left before we come into this turn lane because these are just lines on the ground and yes people shouldn't be going over these lines but someone can make a mistake like I was just mentioning and they might think that this is a turn lane here and they might be coming in inappropriately at this part and then drive straight to get to that turn lane or they might just not care and try to come into this lane. So we can't assume just because we're coming in at the beginning of a turn lane, it's gonna be clear on the left. So we need to check. Now, as we're approaching the intersection, right away, you should be thinking, what kind of light do I have up there, right? So this is a three circle light, this is a four circle light. When I see a four circle light and I wanna turn left, I'm thinking, okay, this is an advanced light, but just because it's called an advanced light doesn't mean that I'm going to necessarily get an arrow. I'm arriving late at the intersection and the advanced arrow has already completed, it's done and it's just acting like a regular intersection light at this point. And even so, we've got this vehicle in front of us waiting to make a left turn and so what I'm doing is waiting behind the stop line because I don't know when they're going to make this turn here, right? It's a pretty busy day on Mackenzie Avenue and there are all these cars coming through. So maybe I'm thinking, okay, and I'm thinking about this, right? So even though this car is the one waiting at the intersection to make a left turn, I am thinking through what they're gonna do. I'm thinking, okay, after this last car here, there's a safe enough gap for them to be taking this turn. I wonder if the light's gonna be green for me, once this guy can make a turn, for me to go into the intersection and make a turn as well. So you can sometimes see the countdown meter on the pedestrian walk signal, and that might give you a little bit more of an indication of when the light might change. Again, just because it goes to zero doesn't mean that this light's gonna change, but it might. It's a clue, it's better than nothing, right? If I see a walk signal, then I know this light is likely still fresh. Now. It's one of those scenarios that this person was getting ready to make the turn. You see how there is this intricate dance, right? As this car is about to come into the intersection, this car is also getting ready to tuck in. Now, if this light was green, this would be the point where I would go into the intersection and then I would see, hey, there are no cars or the, the cars on the top of that hill really far away and there are no pedestrians here. So I would go and make this turn as well. But because the light has just turned yellow, what does yellow mean? Yellow means stop if it's safe. It's safe for me to stop. Why? Because I was already behind my stop line. I was just about to go into the intersection when the light turned to yellow. So the better thing to do for me is instead of making starting a new turn to just sit here and wait for the next cycle of the light. And that's what we ended up doing. So I show you these scenarios so that you know what is right and what is wrong. Now, this is not to be confused with 
what happened here is that if we were in the position of this vehicle, we were, let's say, in our waiting position, and now the light turns yellow, sometimes students think, oh, well, I'm slow, I've st I'm stopped, maybe I should stop here. No, right? Because now you're in the intersection, you need to clear the intersection at some point during the cycle of the light. It doesn't matter too, too much whether you're turning on the yellow or the red, it depends on whether it's clear. So if someone's running a red light, then we have to let him run the red light and tuck in behind them. But there's a fine difference between starting a new turn when it's a yellow light and I can totally stop behind the stop line and whether I'm already in the intersection and I need to complete this turn. So I think for especially drivers, new drivers or people that come from countries where they don't have these advanced turn signals or these regular lights, if you will, because right now it wasn't, the advance is done and it's just like a three circle light, right? So we call these the regular lights. If you come from a country where this is not the typical order of operations at intersections, I want you to watch this video over and over again and kind of get that feel for when did this person make this turn? They made this turn behind that car. When did they start rolling forward? When they knew that this person was coming through the interest. So they started clearing the intersection in a timely manner so that they weren't getting stuck in the intersection more than they needed to. What sometimes happens is with a student, instead of getting the ball rolling on the yellow, right? Let's talk about actually, this execution was not perfect. It was pretty good, but it wasn't perfect. Why? Because this car his waiting position is not the greatest, right? The slightly overshot waiting position. The back wheel should have been in the middle of the crosswalk. So that's really the only thing this car has done incorrectly from what we can see. The good things they've done is they've kept their wheel straight or their vehicle straight rather, and they're facing directly into the oncoming traffic turn lane there, right? So they haven't angled their car preemptively to make a turn because you don't want to do that. You don't want to steer to the left while you wait, right? And so they're doing quite a few things, right? And then what they're doing, this, this little inching forward they did is not a great idea when you still have to wait for three cars to pass through, right? So they're getting a little bit antsy here. What they should instead be doing is just holding in that waiting position until they know, hey, there's not a gap here for them to use. This is too short of a gap. That is too short of a gap. So I'm just going to sit in the waiting position until either the light turns yellow and I can then start inching forward and giving up some of that room or it's green light and the, the traffic has passed through and then I start making my turn. But aside from those things, they're doing it pretty well. And then I like how they were ready to go once it was time to go and tucking in. So. Watch this, the replay at the end of this video several times so you can get a better feel for how that's done. And hopefully that will give you, you can start visualizing yourself making these kind of turns as well. And then when you go out practicing with your quad driver or with us, hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier for you. I'll see you in the next video.